How many trout are you going to catch? Oh, at least six. At least six, you reckon? To start with, yeah. Oh! oh. Yep, got him. Welcome back to another episode. Come up here to a, a lake in the up in the high country of uh, where are we, Tassie? <laughs> where are we? <laughs> uh, yeah, we spend a well, we don't know. Spend at least a night here, maybe a few days. See how we go. We'll be in this area for a little while, so we'll chase some trout. Turns out this lake's only fly fishing only, so uh, yeah, we're doing a bit of fly fishing and we'll find a place where we can use the spin gear as well. Maybe you could have a little lesson teaching me again. Yeah, we're gonna have a crack at that. Figure it out. See how we go. Yeah. I've only just signed to get the hang of spin fishing, let alone starting to do fly fishing, but now's the time. Yeah. So we are located in the Central Plateau Conservation Area. Um, it's beautiful. Like you would have obviously seen it from the intro. It's um, one of those places that as you're driving through, you're just constantly like, wow, oh wow. Um, yeah, nice part of the world. <clears throat> and, but somewhere I don't feel like I've seen a lot of information about. Driving in, there's obviously a lot of people, like, it's literally like everyone just has little cabins up here. You do definitely feel like you're in an alpine area. So but let's get into exploring the area and yeah, hopefully find somewhere we can do some spin fishing too. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a nice brown trout in here. So I think we'll get one, we can cook it up, do a little catch and cook. But absolutely no fires in this area, so there'll be no smoking. Yeah, it'll be, yeah, we can't smoke any fish here, so. We'll be, um, yeah, we'll be cooked in a pan. <laughs> we'll catch them first, so. Yeah, yeah. true. Let's, let's get into it. Let's do it. Bye. Bye. It's the politest sign ever. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No one in Queensland apologises. How many trout are you going to catch? Oh. At least six. At least six, you reckon? To start with, yeah. Just six, okay. What's going to be your, your biggest size? Well, I won't know myself. Oh, it will I? Well, you know, law of attraction. Metery. A meter? <laughs> Metery trout, you want it? Do they exist? I don't think so. <laughs> well, there's ones in the bloody flies with them, I'll get pretty big. How big was the one you were in New Zealand? Not a meter. What are you, 500, 600? Yeah. These are big fish, but not, not a meter. Mm. Fair enough. Well, let's see if you stick to that. Six, you reckon? Six metres. At this lagoon or in the conservation area combined? Oh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Not committing? Yeah, I didn't want to commit. <laughs> Come out for a little go of the salvo. It's windy as. And it's late, it's like eight o'clock or something. But there's plenty of sun because that's how it works down here. But 
Yeah, I'm trying to cast it, not hit myself in this wind, which is pretty difficult. Plus, I can't really see in the water, so I'm hoping I don't just go straight off the edge or something. I think the plan for tomorrow will be hike all the way around the dam. That's where the, the river runs in down there, so. It's not bad though, look at that sun. <coughs> Good morning. Whew. It was a big hike. I've just come right around to this little creek inlet. I saw a few fish rising on the way over, but I was like, no, I'm going to stick to the plan. This is my theory that, yeah, trout like the flowing water, so I'm hoping this creek's pushing a little bit of water in. I've seen a few rise just to the front here, so Whew. I'll start there and then I'll work up. This is pretty, it's pretty rough going. I know this sank a couple of times, you can't tell what's underneath you. Definitely need to get some waders. Anyway, I've just got the wet fly on from yesterday still, so I'm just gonna throw that around the front here for a bit. And I'll start moving my way up this creek. It doesn't look like it's flowing that much, so. See what happens. Whew. This is what I love about trout fishing though. Especially fly fishing for trout, it's definitely one of the more challenging forms of the game. I guess it's less so much about the fish you catch and more about the places it takes you though as well. I know I just said I'm wading through knee deep high swamp but this morning that was just all mist i got a little bit of footage of it couldn't see the lake at all which is pretty cool so that's what it's all about trout's a bonus anyway i keep getting up here i'll start having a few casts Put the nymph back on. Or well, the nymph rig and the nymph, I suppose. So I'm just gonna work up this this little creek. much movement at all. I thought it was flowing a bit before but maybe I'll go up where it narrows a bit where it should be moving. <coughs> I 
Wow, it's been pretty slow this morning. Oh! oh. This is the hardest part about this. Just these f***ing bits of grass just turn into holes. Anyway, what I was saying, I just spotted a big one, well I spooked a big one just in here. And then as I came up to this little bit, there was one cruising just in here. And I crouched down and got out of the way and had a few casts. Anyway, I thought he'd swam out, but he was right up in this stuff. Took off when I got close. I've just seen a couple more just cruising in and out of the weed there. So we can get through this. So that's a good sign. There's some good good fish too, not just, not just little ones. So I'm taking the nymph off, I'm back on the wet fly. I was nearly ready to turn around but I think I'll just keep going a little bit longer and really try and spot these fish and sight cast to them. Which is even harder than <laughs> catching them normally. Especially with this wind and these holes in the ground. Anyway, when I see the next one, I'll turn the camera back on. Might be able to see a fish. Could be weird. I think it's weird. Well, not the most successful morning fishing for Shane, eh? Um, but he got chatting to a guy whilst he was fishing who said there was a couple other good spots around and there's a couple of spots we wanted to test ourselves. So we're going to go for a bit of a wonder and explore and see what else there is to find, see if there's a better spot we could be at. So we're back at camp now, and we we're just saying what an absolute pearler of a day it is. It's a beaut. It's so beautiful. But it's like jacket on, jacket off, jacket on, jacket off. It's not too bad now, you just race for the sun and it tides you through the next gust of wind. Because <laughs> it is pretty windy, like quite a few of the campsites on the central plateau are quite exposed, um, and it is very windy spot. So outside of summer, I could imagine it getting really cold here. Super cold. Um, so investigating today was good, promising. Um, Pine Tier Lagoon, one of the spots we went to, looked really good and we were considering camping there, but we think we might just head to a place called 19 Lagoons instead tomorrow, hey? Yeah, I reckon. <clears throat> Heard really good things about it and there's a lot of spots to like, hike to lagoons where there should be some good big trout. Yeah. Because Gal's getting hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so... Um, 
Yeah, that's the plan of attack for tomorrow. Shane's gonna go for another fish to Savi though, so hopefully not. <laughs> apparently, tip, apparently the reason there's not many fish biting at the moment is because they don't like the direct sunlight. Mm. Which is interesting. Yeah, I think it's to do with the dun hatch. <gasps> the what? The dun hatch. What's the dun hatch? You know, those little bloody bug things. So they, don't, they, they come out when it's overcast, is what old boy was telling me. Oh, you got yeah. the inside scoop. Yeah, so when it's overcast, they're all landing on the water, hatching and carrying on like bugs do. And uh, yeah, the trout go nuts. So apparently when it's like this, they're not out, so the trout are down deep or not, not having fun. Mm. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Well, Shane, I will see you later for a fishing sesh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they chop differently, like. So Shane has just been introduced to the world of Dutch cream potatoes. We um bought some the other day. I'm just looking at the bird. Jim, go get the bird watching book out. That one's brown with a white butt. No, they were stripy ones. We bought a bird watching book. We're officially old people. Um, so yeah, we got some Dutch cream potatoes because we just went to a little IGA and obviously they had local potatoes and we made mashed potato with steak and mash the other night. And Shane's mind was blown. Yeah, they're the best damn potatoes in the world. They literally taste like restaurant potatoes and you just mash them. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So now we had to stop in. I'm going to keep one out and just eat it before I mash it. Just to work out if they actually, they're, they are, they're just the best thing in the world. I don't normally, like, I got to do it like potatoes, but they're not like my jam. Yeah, these guys. They're almost like meatier, hey. Did they're you say creamier that's what it is? and Cream more delicious and flavoury. They're called Dutch cream for a reason. MSG infused. MSG infused. <laughs> so, um, he made me stop at a fruit and veg shop in Del well, met you stopped and made me run into a fruit and veg shop in Delarane just specifically to go grab more um what are they called dash cream potatoes. But I even bought a kilo and he's still like, You didn't buy enough. I never thought I'd hear that sentence out of your mouth. They're more so good. <laughs> They're so damn good. Damn it. <laughs> Might have to sample all the taters of Tazzy. Yeah, taters of Tazzy. <laughs> Make a special episode. Yeah. <laughs> taters of Tazzy cooking special. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Go on, chow into your Dutch cream potatoes. Oh, <gasps> no! No! Oh, yeah, but yours is higher than mine. <gasps> <laughs> um. All right, I'll come back out for the Arvo sesh. It's like seven o'clock or something. I don't know, can't tell. <coughs> Just down in this little pocket. One of the old blokes reckons this would be the go. And it's pretty well the only place you can be with that wind's coming just to my back and to the right slightly pretty hard. So just got the wet fly on. I'm hoping there'll be a bit of a hatch and fish will start rising around me, but we'll see how we go. Judging by this wind, I might have to move anyway. And all the weed I keep getting. Anyway, these are the joys of me fly fishing. <coughs> Tough day in the office this one. Any fish will do at this stage. Confidence fish, donkey fish. I take a bloody cod. Or a brim even. All I keep getting is weed. If it's gonna happen, I'm sure it's gonna be now. The sun's still got a fair way to go. But the wind's dropped as most as it's probably gonna do while the sun's up. I 
I can see the little bugs getting around, which is, I think they're the duns that they're talking about. But there's no fish rising or anything, but still, they've got to be here. Look, there's one there. Morning. You're a bit busy. Good eye. <laughs> um, so Shana went for a fish again last night and again this morning and still no luck. Uh, we just got chatting to an old bloke. Well, Shane got chatting to an old bloke and he just said that they call the, uh, the trout on this lake the untouchables because they're that hard to catch. So, But we've just left camp heading on to the next one and Shane has spotted a nice looking river that you can see a fishy on. Yep. So he's gonna go for a flick, see what he can find. Okay. Gotta be very quiet and gentle. There's a fish in there. I just gotta get down. Without spooking him. Okay, he's right in the middle of that pool. I've just gone back to the nymph. I'll get behind this rock here. It should give me a cast. I don't want to whisper in a minute. I don't think the ears are that good. Hopefully he's still there. Excited there. I think he'd moved. Or as another one just came up there. I don't know if they saw me or not. That could be a good one. I reckon he spotted me. There's a big one to just come in to join the party. He definitely hadn't spotted me because he was just cruising real slow. Let's see if I can get it. Just to the right of him, little ones. No, I need to go over more. Whew. Here we go, come on. Doesn't want it. It's just moved. What a scared him. Yep, got him. Ah, oh, it's just a little one. It's 
still fish is a fish. Hopefully he didn't spook the big one. He carries on like that he will. It's not a bad little one, not quite big enough. still in there. That's that confidence fish again. Hopefully they can't see me. I'll give this another run and then I'll try a different fly. It's just this little golden green nymph thing. About there. We followed it. Definitely seeing it. Just going to try a different fly. That was right over the top of them, I just don't want it. And they're sitting just out of the current, so I can't really get it to float past them properly. just yeah it's sort of floating the only way to get it to go past is to let the line drag it which is probably ooh. well I might have spooked them they seem to get spooked and then they just come back I think they're onto me though come to a different spot um, yeah still just chasing trout looking for mint campsites so, um, we just found just like a little forward drive track it's five k's into one of the other lagoons it looks like we should we don't know what it's out there but hopefully it's just a, a car park sort of thing where we can camp on one of the lakes and uh, yeah we're gonna go set up there and hopefully find some fish and find some places to hike and look for more fish Mm. Okay. Fingers crossed, we have absolutely no idea what we're yeah, going we into. Yeah, we don't know what it is. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. Oh, cute. Oh. <laughs>